chat gpt chat gpt chat gpt you might have heard this term a lot of times in the past couple of months and you would have also seen the fear it created with just its beta release it has gained tremendous popularity in just two months and reached 100 million users in just two months yes people are saying that many jobs will be obsolete and replaced by ai in coming few years but this is not the reason why you have started this video you have clicked on the below link because you want to know how you can boost your productivity exponentially using chat gpt because we can either fear for the future or prepare ourselves for what's coming in the future for us whether you are a student or an it professional this video is for you so sit back grab a notepad and let's jump into the video Before we jump into the demo, let's quickly see what exactly is ChatGPT. In simple terms, it's an AI based tool that was trained to be able to answer and have conversations just like a human would. The goal is to make it easier for people to communicate with computers and get information easily. Let's see how you can make your life easier with ChatGPT. Let's go to this URL. If you are using it for the first time, it would ask you to sign up using your email account and that's it it is free to use at least the free version is free to use now that they have paid subscription as well but the free version should be good enough for us it has this user friendly ui this is just like how you would text someone from your phone let's start with our prompts let's assume i am a beginner in devops and would like to gain some hands-on project experience so that i can show that in my resume i'll just put provide me ideas for sample web application that i could use in my ci cd project as soon as you hit enter it will generate some results for you such as a to-do list application a weather application a book library application, contact management application, and so on. I could either pick any application from the list or click over the regenerate response and it will give you a fresh list. I can even enter a new prompt and regenerate simple application for beginners. Now it gave me one application code of the day and provided some details about how to build it, how to deploy it, what tools you can use and so on. I would like to explore some more beginner friendly ideas. So I will enter the prompt, generate five more ideas for beginners. I have five more ideas now. I guess I'll go with this one, a simple calculator app. And then I would say generate the Python code for simple calculator app. And just in a couple of seconds, it will generate a Python code for you as soon as you hit enter. This is the simple Python based calculator application that is easy enough to be created by a beginner in DevOps or programming. Along with the code, it also generated a description of how the code will be implemented. Now, this is a CLI based application and I want it to be accessible over the internet through a web browser. So I am looking for a web based application over here. My next prompt will do the dirty work for me, which is convert that application to a web application as simple as that. I did not even have to mention which framework to use and it will generate the code for Python Flask. Even if you are an expert level programmer, you would at least take a few minutes to write these many lines of code. If you are a beginner and don't know anything about Flask, this is really a game changer. It has provided me with the description. What does it do? The calculator function process the data and the result is then displayed in the second template and so on. Now let's add one more prompt. Make this web application responsive to mobile phones as well. Now it has also generated an HTML template with CSS which makes it responsive to handheld devices as well. In our next prompt, I will instruct ChatGPT to dockerize the application. And just like everything else, it generated the Docker file, which is basically the instructions to build your Docker image. It also provided the details of each step in the Docker file, followed by the steps to build the image and how to run your Docker container. Once you perform these steps, the applications will be accessible over port 5000 on your local host. It provided us with a lot of details. However, it did not mention the content of requirements.txt file. So let's ask that with a new prompt. What are the content of requirements.txt file? And there it is. Even if the application misses anything, 
just prompt it and it will provide you with that information. Now we have an application. We converted that into Flask and we dockerize that application as well. The next step would be to automate the build and deployment process. I will enter the prompt, generate a sample Jenkins CI CD pipeline for this application. It provided us with the steps for our CI CD pipeline, such as source code management, build, deploy to test, testing, production deployment, and so on. But it did not generate the code for us. Don't worry. Prompt is our friend. Generate the pipeline code as well. And here is our pipeline with different stages. You would still have to make certain changes in the code, such as replacing the placeholder values, removing the extra line of codes, adding build and deploy agents and so on. But you did not have to create the pipeline on a blank canvas. You have the skeleton ready, which is a huge help. Over here is the description of each of the pipeline stage. If you realize one thing, we are asking follow up questions from chat GPT without providing the context. For example, we asked to create the pipeline, but we did not ask for which application. It already knows that we are calling it as prompt. Now the pipeline has different stages such as build, code, checkout and deployment testing. But it does not have the stage for static code analysis, which is one of our requirements. So let's prompt it again at the stage for static code analysis. Then it provides us with the updated version of Jenkins file. It added another stage and used pylint to perform the static code analysis on this app. The rest of the pipeline is almost what we saw earlier and description now includes the added stage as well. Now let me add another prompt to convert this pipeline into a Kubernetes manifest. It did almost everything for you, created the deployment. It added the necessary fields such as metadata, replicas, labels, and container names and added the image placeholder for you. You just have to put in your registry details, credentials, image, and that's it. Then it exposed the deployment using service and generated the description as well. Again, you can add more details such as readiness, liveliness, probe, and few other details based on your use case. But this is the simplistic Kubernetes manifest that it created for you with just a prompt. Now the pipeline code that we generated was for a Docker based application. And now that we converted this into a Kubernetes manifest, let's try to regenerate the pipeline code. Now it converted the Jenkins pipeline in the deployment stage. The deployment YAML that we have just created, it's deploying the same using kubectl command. This is right. However, you might have to make some changes to replace this step with the step to generate Kubernetes credential to log into the cluster. But it did almost 70% of the work for you and you have to just make few changes here and there. Now let's try to provision the infrastructure to host this application. But before we do that, if you are enjoying the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. If you are new to the channel and uh, consider giving it a thumbs up, that would make a huge difference. Let's continue with our video. Now let's try to provision the infrastructure to host this application. And we would not be doing this manually. Let's use Terraform for that. So I will enter the prompt, generate Terraform files to provision the infrastructure to host this application. We did not specify which cloud provider we want to use. So by default, it selected AWS, but we can prompt chat GPT to use our preferred cloud provider, or we can just go ahead with this. It created the AWS instance to host our application security group, which allow traffic on port 80 so that application would be accessible over the internet. And then it generated output for public IP. And here is the description as well. Let's go ahead and ask chat GPT to generate variable files as well and use variables in main file. Well, it generated the file with required variables and rewrote main.tf to use those variables with the syntax var.region var.calculator app name and so on. We have created a lot of things till now and it hardly took us 10 minutes for everything, including the prompts that we have entered. So now let's do something that is really boring when we do it on our own. And you know, no one likes to do it, which is the documentation part. Our next prompt would be, and you will be surprised on this one as well. Generate a readme file for the Jenkins pipeline application code and Terraform. Yes, you heard me right. Here is our topic subheading prerequisites, description of the pipeline, 
and stages that it has followed by the application code description and terraform usage this is brilliant at the end it also added a simple guideline for the contributors now that we have seen the power of chat gpt you can use it to generate not just the code but the documentation explaining the code as well we can utilize it to understand the best practices as well so our next prompt would be provide me best practices of using terraform and here are the best practices of using terraform such as use of version control modularize the application use variables state file management in the remote backend and so on now let's use this information provided above and create a blog out of it our next prompt write a technical blog using the above details now make some changes prompt it again and publish your blog piece of cake right I'm going to stop generating it and move forward with our video. The other benefit of using chat GPT is to understand the complex concept in a simple language. Let's say I would like to understand Docker as a beginner. I would just prompt explain Docker to me like I am 10. And just like that, it gave a really impactful analogy of toys and boxes for containers and dependencies. You can pause the video over here and read the definition. It's super amazing. I have a question for you. How do you use chat GPT to boost your productivity? Let me know in the comment section below. Now let's try to generate a sample GitLab CI CD pipeline using our next prompt. My previous session got expired. That is why it generated the pipeline for a sample PHP app and not for the calculator app that we were working on. Now I can just prompt it to convert the pipeline into a Jenkins pipeline with our new prompt. See, you can just write your logic once and convert that into multiple languages and formats using just a simple chat GPT prompt. Till here, we have learned and implemented our DevOps project, which covers your application code, make it responsive, convert that into a CI CD pipeline, dockerize the application infrastructure as a code template using Terraform, documentation, technical blog, and so on. Now comes the part to apply multiple jobs using the skills that we have just learned. I will head over to LinkedIn and look for any DevOps related job. Let's pick the first one, Enterprise Technical Architect DevOps. Now I will just copy the job requirement and enter the prompt as write me a cover letter for the below job and I'll press shift enter and then I'll just write my copy text. And here is your customized cover letter. Now you can apply 30 times faster to multiple companies. If you think the cover letter has a lot of details, you can prompt it to rewrite it in less than 100 words and use bullet points. Yeah, it's I know it is amazing. Now make a few changes to it, such as years of experience, update or remove any skill that you do not have. And that's it. It did 90% of the work for you. And last but not the least, you can also generate dummy data for your testing or data analysis. Enter the prompt, generate dummy data for calculator app. And here's the dummy data. You can also prompt it to rewrite the data in a CSV format, and it will convert the data into CSV format. So these were just some examples of how you can use it to boost your productivity. The possibilities are endless. However, the model is currently in beta release and there are some limitations. For instance, it only has data till 2021. Sometimes it also produces incorrect results. So make sure you use it with caution and use it only for the use cases that you have some basic knowledge about. Let's look at one of the limitations that I have recently found. So if I enter the prompt 9 a.m. EST to IST, it is giving me incorrect result. If we Google the same prompt, it is showing it as 7.30 p.m. IST. But with chat GPT, it is showing 2.30 p.m. IST. There are a lot of things that it has to improve, but it is still so powerful. So if you use it with caution, it can definitely boost your productivity to at least 10 times. Alright, uh, that's it for this video guys. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video and learned something out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, colleagues and let me know in the comment section below how you use it to boost your productivity or any suggestion that you have for me.
I will see you soon in the next video and take care of yourself. Thank you for watching.